Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome back to another Scrum Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering importing your custom sounds into the game and having them play on various actions. So the first thing that I want to go ahead and do is get my custom sound, which I've got here, which is DF Sound Manfart. And this is in WAV format. Uh, you can probably use a couple of other formats, but WAV is really the one uh, that Scrum's going to work the best with. And I want to go ahead, copy that, and I want to put it into my data folder. I've got some nice quick access shortcuts. Um, so it's in your Scrum data folder, under sound, under FX. And then what you want to do is make a new folder for your own mod. So I'm going to call this test. And within there, I'm going to paste in my sound. I'm just going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to load the creation kit. And what I'm going to do is use my test dummy that I'm using in a few of my tutorials. And on activation of that test dummy, I'm going to play my sound. Now, what you can also do is insert sounds that do uh, loops, for example. So looping ambient sounds, which I'll go through in a moment. Um, but just to get a pure sound that plays off, you can obviously have any sort of event to trigger it, uh, whether it's part of an object or whether it is on activation or whatever. Uh, I'm going to do it just on this test dummy just to demonstrate the, the sound effect itself. So what I want to do is, oh, hang on, not double click on there. I'll show you the script in a moment. Uh, I want to go under audio and you want to go under descriptor. So I'm just going to drag this out a bit so we can read that. And what you need is a descriptor and a sound marker. So for the descriptor, what I like to do is find anything that can kind of be somewhat similar. Uh, so let's just go with, ooh, I don't know, something opening, for example. So this might not be 100% accurate to this one. I think this one will work, actually. Um, but what that does, it just gives you a base to work with. I'll explain some of these settings in a moment. I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to sound D for descriptor and fart. And click OK, create new. I'm going to search for it in the filter double click into it and descriptor is standard I don't think there's any other options for that uh, you can play and stop it now I think I've got my audio disabled in my creation kit to prevent crashes in Windows 10 so we won't be able to hear it uh, but if your audio is enabled and uh, turn it up a little bit because it's usually quite quiet uh, you can sort of preview the sounds in here now what you've got is sounds and you'll see this is pointing to the other one right now I'm going to delete that I'm going to right click and new and then it's already navigating to the effects section under sound. Go into test, click on my man fart, open that, put that in. And the other thing that you can do is set various conditions. You'll need to tick this box here. So you can make it so that you can check if the player's in a particular cell, if the weather's raining. There's all sorts of conditions that you can set. So if you want to restrict the sound from playing only at certain points, you can do that. I'm not going to in, in this case, so I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, the category, uh, this just depends on how it's going to really sound. Uh, this is why I said sort of get something that's very similar to the kind of sound that you're importing in because it will kind of figure out what all this stuff needs to be anyway. So you'll see there's one for music, one for ambience, and you want to sort of make sure you roughly get the right thing there. Uh, the, sound for the, the same for the output model. Uh, this may need to be slightly different. It just kind of changes the way that it sounds. So it's going to be a lot of trial and error, or like I say, find something that's similar. Now the static attenuation, this can be tweaked up and down uh, depending on how loud or how quiet you want. If you want to sort of bump up or lower the volume of the actual thing itself, uh, you can change stuff here as well. I'm not going to mess with this. Hopefully this will work perfectly fine. But if we find out that it's a bit quiet or it's not, well, it's too loud, um, then we can go ahead and tweak these settings later. Hopefully it will be okay. Uh, alternate. I'm not sure if that's for an alternate sound or anything. I've not really ever messed with that. I'd kind of leave it alone. I don't think I've ever seen anything use that, at least not yet. Uh, looping, obviously you can say, is this going to loop? Is it going to continuously go and go and go? Or is it just going to happen once? So in this case, we probably want this to happen once. If it's something like ambience or music, it's probably going to loop. Uh, I don't tend to use these two either. And I don't really mess with these settings. Uh, you can change the priority uh, to default or this is essentially, I think when there's a lot of sounds going on, this is going to uh, kind of make sure that it really focuses on this one. There's different priorities for things. I don't think you need to worry too much on that one. 
the rumbling is for your controller so if you want a rumble effect on on controllers to go with this whether it's small or big you can set how strong or weak that's going to be or you can just keep it off i'm going to put big relatively high not that you'll see the difference but i'll certainly feel it uh, on the controller uh, and that's pretty much all that you need to do for sound descriptor you can go ahead click ok like i say if things aren't working things are a bit weird make sure you've got your path right and uh, also tweak some settings for like the decibels and everything and then if you go to sound marker you can right click and new and what you're going to need to do is link the descriptor to a sound marker and you can go ahead and search for your new sound So there we go, just create that one, really simple. And you can either drag and drop this into the world and this will either loop or play once and make it sound. Uh, you can enable ref this to something. So if this was the sound of a water wheel like there is in Riverwood here, uh, you'll notice that that will go next to the water wheel, that will be on loop. And if this, like my mod Millwater Retreat, had a wheel that was off by default and when you get it spinning, there's a sound to it, you would enable ref it and it'll only happen as long as the enabled reference is uh, there, if it's enabled. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. You can do it as a looping sound, or you can do what I'm going to do here, and you can have it trigger off something. So you can put it in a script, have it fire off uh, when you activate certain objects and other various ways. So I'm going to edit my dummy. I've already made a little script here. I'll include this in the description as well. It's very, very simple. You don't need to know scripting to, to import sounds. Obviously, this is just how I'm going to make my sound fire off. For an example, I've got player ref, which I'm going to let auto fill. And then I've got my sound property, which I'm going to go ahead and fill in. So there it is. Click OK. And I'll just show you the script. If you want to know what I use for editing my scripts, it is Sublime Text 3, and I do have a video on it if you want to go ahead and watch that and get it set up for yourself. Uh, so you'll see here, really, really simple script. Uh, we've got the player reference where the sound's going to originate, and we have the sound uh, property for my sound, and I just do that sound play on the player ref on activation. And again, this can be on any kind of event. So it's really up to you. Okay on both of those, hit save and now we'll pop in game and see it working. Okay so here I am in game and I'm going to walk up to my dummy and activate that in a moment. Uh, one thing that I'll mention is with this script I was targeting the player as the point to, to play. I find that works a lot more than uh, specific references because you might be a certain distance away and you won't hear it or uh, the decibel level won't be right. Uh, so it's just a matter of sort of tweaking around when it comes to like scripting and stuff. Um, but this should work perfectly fine, so let's give it a go. And there you go, you heard the sound. I actually got the rumble on the controller. It wasn't too powerful because I didn't set it too high up, but I could definitely tell that it was one of the, the stronger rumbles in the in the remote because I, uh, I asked for a sort of big rumble. So yeah, there you go, and you can press it as many times as you like. You could put restrictions on if you wanted, but... There you go. And that is just about it for this video. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell button if you want to see more videos in the future such as this one. You can also go ahead and support my work if you so wish over on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.